All right, so now that I'm out of the picture, you can more clearly see we're looking at a body here, and we can see we've pe peeled the skin off, and we're just looking at the muscles, which is under that first layer of skin there. And what we're going to do is we're going to peel off the layers of muscles so that we can see the skeleton and the nerves there. And we're even going to peel away the nerves so we can just see the skeleton and maybe some of the spinal nerves you'll see in the back there. You can see the yellow, the spinal cord is in there. But what we're going to look at is the body view. On the left over here, we're looking at the spine and pelvis and a body with a few muscles represented. On the left, we're looking at this section, that same section of the spine shown in the box, with those same representations of the muscles. What we're going to look at is how the bones can move and whether or not the muscles can move them in certain directions because that is what turns out to be the important thing. If you have bones, and this is just in your spine, but this goes for everywhere in your body, but in your spine, if you have a body that tilts and the bone goes out of place slightly because it's tilted, you have muscles here on the side, you can see here on the right in this particular case, you have muscles on the side that can pull that bone and the, the other bones back into position. And of course, if you go to the right, you have the same thing on the left. You can pull them back into position. So that takes care of tilt. Now, if you have a bone that goes directly sideways, well, again, you have muscles that can pull that bone back into position, and that's true whether it goes right or left. Now, if the bone goes and the spine goes into a twist, well, you have actually those same muscles plus some other muscles back here that can pull those bones back into position and that's true whether it twists to the right or to the left. Now that's from the back view. If we look at the side view, again we're looking at that same uh, section of the spine from here that's just been enlarged over here and we're looking at it in this little section. When you look at that and you look at the motion of the bones. You could see if the entire body tilts forward, you have muscles in the back here that can pull that spine back. Now you actually have larger muscles that go all the way down here. They're called the extensors. Those are those two big muscles if you feel back in your spine right now. You can feel them just next to your spine. So you can use those muscles and you could pull that back and uh, straighten out the body and that actually is what happens when your body falls forward and you have to work hard to keep it up which we'll show you can be handled and you don't have to do. Now if one of those bones goes backward and you can see it's not just one of those bones the entire spine above it goes backward because they all work together and uh, one sits on top of the other but if that goes backward you have muscles here that go from the front of the spine to the front of the body. Actually, that would be to the back of the ribs in your chest, and they could pull that forward. And then down here, you have muscles that go from the front of the spine down to your pelvis. And this happens all the way up and down your spine. So if you have a vertebra that goes backward, you can easily self-correct them and pull them forward. Now, if one of those bones in your spine gets pushed forward, and, you know, people always ask, how does that happen? Uh, you can get hit from behind. Somebody can hit you hard on the back. You can fall on your back. There's a million ways it can happen, all of these bones going out of place. But if you have a bone that goes forward, you would need a muscle here that attaches from the back of your spine to something behind it to pull that bone back into place. Unfortunately, human beings don't have that muscle. It's, there's nothing there. Even if they had it, as you can see over here on the left, even if they had it, where would it go to? It goes back to nowhere because there's nothing behind your spine except for some skin. So what happens when that bone goes forward, your body tilts forward and loses its leverage and your body tilts forward and you have no way to self-correct it. So it turns out that the most important thing that happens with bodies to cause structure to collapse and have problems or to cause body structures to go wrong is bones go out of place in a direction the body cannot self-correct because there are no muscles pulling in the direction needed to pull them back into place and correct them. Now there are plenty of bones that go out of place in directions the body can self-correct 
uh, and the body sometimes leaves them alone to compensate for the forces created by the bones that go out of place in a direction the body cannot self-correct. But we're going to get to that later, and that, that ends up to be the explanation for how a lot of things go wrong. But what happens here, this bone goes forward, you have no muscles pulling in this direction to pull it back, and so you get stuck. Now, by the way, even if you did have muscles that attach from the spine to something behind it, again, where would they go? There's nothing behind there. They, you know, they'd have to go through your skin and you'd have to attach them to a hook on the wall or something like that in order for that to pull back. So that is the key. Bones can go out of place in a direction your body cannot self-correct because there are no muscles that can pull in the direction needed to retrieve that bone and pull it back into place. And that's more of a key than you could possibly imagine. What happens when that bone goes out of place is shown here. See how that body is stuck forward? Let's go back to the beginning here. Now what happens is somehow that bone gets pushed forward and it doesn't just stay like that. It's lost its leverage. It's sticking out over here and it's lost its leverage so what happens is the entire body collapses and that's why you get collapsed postures like you see here if we show you actual people and you look at them all of these pictures are breathe in breathe out relax and let your body slump they are relaxed in the before treatment pictures and they are relaxed in the after treatment pictures and you could see how their bodies collapse in the before pictures. All they had was one time, one treatment, you can see they're in the same clothing, one treatment with the advanced biostructural treatment protocol and we asked them breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump. Let your body slump. Let your body slump. And when they turned around and said to us I am or I can't or something like that, we said okay let's do it one more time and we'll take the picture. So these people are trying to slump and you could see they can't. So what happens is shown in this picture. Let's go over here and what you have is the body starts f up, the bone gets knocked out of place and then they, the whole body goes forward and the reverse happens. When we correct that, not only does the bone go back in place, but see how this person's still bent? Well, once that bone's back in place, your leverage returns and your body pops upright all by itself. So I can tell you the following. Number one is the key to what happens with bodies is bones go out of place in a direction the body can't self-correct because there's no muscles pulling in the direction needed to correct them. And if your doctor physical therapist, chiropractor, osteopath, uh, voodoo doctor, whatever, rolfer, any of those people, if they are actually correcting your structure, when they say breathe in, breathe out, relax and let your body slump, your body will stay upright all by itself. Now I've shown uh, a child here, I've shown some adults here, let me show you a senior. This is the same type of thing that happens here with this woman. All right, breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump. She came into the office, and these aren't even my patients. These are practitioners from around the world because I don't want people to have the idea that only Jesse Jutkowitz can do this. Your practitioner is certified, and he or she can do this too. So we said breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump, and this is where her body goes. Now, what you can't see, she's actually trying to hold herself up a little bit because she started to lean forward and fall also. Now, this picture is after day one. The doctor did the ABC protocol and stood her in front of the camera and said, breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump. Let your body slump. Let your body slump. And she said, I can't. It doesn't go anymore. And he said, okay, let's take a picture. Breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump, and boom, this is the picture. In this particular person's case, you could see her body's leaning a little bit backward, but it's much more upright. It's not completely fixed up. Well, she had a lot of things stuck forward, worse than average. Here's that same woman after the second day. 
And by the way, this height thing here you see, that's not because the pictures are different size. She actually popped upward and straightened out and was taller. And that second picture is after she got treated on day two. And it's breathe in, breathe out, relax, let your body slump. Let your body slump, let your, you know, and we went through that whole routine. And that's what the picture is. So again, if you're getting treated and your body does not stay upright all by itself at the end of the treatment, whatever they're doing, it's not structural correction. And that's what you're going to be getting from your certified ABC practitioner. And the important thing here is that your body will stay upright all by itself because we are going to correct the bones out of place in a direction the body cannot self-correct because it has no muscles pulling in the direction needed. That's the basic thing that happens. And now your practitioner is going to take you back into the room and going to run the ABC protocol on you. And if I were you, I would insist on before and after pictures if they're not being done because I would want to see everything that's happened. After your home, I'll explain how everything I've told you causes your particular problem. In about two minutes, you're going to be taken back to see your practitioner. I'm just going to give you a brief overview so you can get yourself treated and get some relief. For just a really quick view at it, if you look here, what you have is bones out of place with multiple compensations. So let's go back to the beginning. Some bone gets knocked forward. Your body can't self-correct, so it's got to compensate by pulling other parts up. You can see this red area here. That's because it starts to be painful. And not only that, but what happens is it starts to lever that other bone more forward and locks it into that forward position. So the top of your body is straight, but you're folded forward here, and you end up with sort of this angular fold forward. But you can't take that because it bothers your back much. So then you lean forward somewhere else, and you create another bone that goes out of place in a direction the body can't self-correct as part of a compensation pattern. Of course, you don't want that there because your neck is forward and your head is stuck downward. And this is why you see a lot of people, you know, they walk and they look at the ground. Well, that's because they're stuck in this position. The people that can compensate end up using their muscles back here to pull this back up to hold their head up. Now, what happens is they've now run out of places to compensate because, you know, all you have above here is your head and your hair. So this part right here is the genesis. It's the beginning of every neck pain and every headache and every tightness and all that. So where you have your pain is almost always at a compensation point. When you have headaches and neck pain, if they work on your neck, it's almost always a waste of time. This is going to be true for just about everything everywhere in your body because the primary problem where the bone's out of place in a direction your body can't self-correct because there are no muscles pulling in the direction needed, where they are, your body doesn't hurt because it has to shift the pressure away from that. Now it gets more complicated than this and we're going to show you lots of what's going on but this is enough for right now and this will get you started so you can understand what your practitioner is doing.